Well, welcome back to our conversational exposition through the book of Exodus. I'm here with Pastor David Guzik and Pastor Nate Wagner. And uh, we find ourselves in chapter 28, starting in verse 40. We're talking more about the priestly garments. We just talked about the high priestly garments, but now we just talk about the, the priests and what they would wear. So does anyone want to take it? Sure. Read it. I'll go for it. Here we go. Verse 40, Exodus 28. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, and you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me as priest. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and his descendants after him. Okay, so it wasn't just the high priest that had special clothing, although his clothing was unique. Right. Uh, it's also the other priests. Where did the other priests come from? Also from his family. Right. Yeah. Sons. Aaron's sons. And his sons, yeah. So that's how you got to be a priest in Israel. You were a descendant of Aaron, and so these guys had their own clothing as well. Their own hats, their own tunics, their own sashes. My question, would Aaron or the high priest wear this clothing? You mentioned in another episode of this is that the, the garments that are described for the high priest would typically be worn in you know, ceremonial times or, right. or really special times, would, would Aaron wear I, this? These I garments? think so. Yeah. I mean, look, we've we got to remember when the Bible mm -hmm. doesn't say we can't be definitive. Right. But I think so. I think he would normally just wear this, this linen outfit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which would be similar to the clothes that, that a normal Israelite would wear, except be all linen, presumably white, we don't know for sure, mm -hmm. with a hat, but, but nice. They, they were to be dressed nice in the work that they did. I love this uh, verse there, verse uh, 41. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them. That they may minister to me as priests. Yeah. So there's three things, right? What were they? Anointing, consecration, and sanctification. Well, that, that's pretty interesting. Anointing, what's that about? Is it anointing just the idea of, of with oil? That kind of this idea of like the Holy Spirit, just like this guy, this, this man needs to be filled, to be anointed. Well, that's what it's a picture of, a but picture, literally, guess, literally it, it's, it's the application oil. of oil upon right. somebody. And uh, would they just put a little bit of oil on somebody or what? I mean, it's more like, a, I mean, that's what we do, but they just pour it, the idea of just dumping it on them. Right, right. Then so they just even get their beard and it's dripping Yeah, down. dripping off the beard of Aaron is a biblical phrase there, like oil. Okay, so you got anointing, and then you got consecration. Con consecration, what, what's the idea behind that? It's kind of the idea of, of, of open-handedness. You come to God with open-handedness. Is it like receiving from God or giving unto God? You know, that, that's the, the a sense of the Hebrew word that's used here in this verse, verse 41, for consecrate, mm -hmm. to, to the filling of the open hand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that idea, Lord, I come and you equip me. Yeah. You separate me. You, you prepare me for what I need. Now, you can't have God fill your hands until you empty them, yeah. but that, that's an important point. Mm. And then the third one, Nate, was to sanctify. Right, Is that, that basically means to be set apart, that, right. that you're just set apart for God's the, the, the specific Hebrew word that's used here also has the idea of to make clean, to be mm. clean before the Lord. And it speaks about this moral separation mm. from the, the priest. Now, part of that moral separation was uh, reflected in the linen trousers. Did you notice this? It says... And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. Hmm. Now, look, I, I don't mean to sound flippant, and I'm certainly not saying this mm -hmm. to be funny or cute or anything, but it seems like these were something like, you know, what we might call boxer shorts that they yeah. would wear because God did not want their nakedness exposed in any way with the priestly service. These guys were lifting, carrying, mm -hmm. reaching, all this stuff. God said, no, I don't want that nakedness exposed. Now, what, why would this be important to the Lord? Well, is there an idea that perhaps the nations around them also had their priests for their false idols and things? And we, I think maybe we had this idea that they probably did their ministry to their God kind of naked or, or just more grotesque. Well, yeah, it, it seems like this was a practice in some of the pagan cultures around them. Mm -hmm. They would have some kind of ritualistic nakedness right. on behalf of the priest. Used and God said, no. That's, mm -hmm. that's not it. 
But as well, I mean, God provides coverings. God provides mm -hmm. that He provided it way back for Adam and Eve. So God says, no, when, when you're in the service of me, I don't want flesh to be seen. I don't want nakedness to be seen. I've given you a covering. And, and this kind of translates to us as priests, mm -hmm. as Jesus Christ, does it not? Yeah. Yeah, th th there's no reason for someone in their walk with God today to feel unclothed, naked, exposed. Mm -hmm. Rather, they should really have that sense of being covered in mm -hmm. who Jesus is and what he's done. Mm -hmm. Wow, glorious. Good picture. All right, so uh, this sort of wraps up this section having to do with the clothing of the priest. God wants his priest clothed. If somebody were to come to you and say, okay, what does it mean for me as the new covenant says, I'm a priest. What does it mean for me to be clothed? I may not be a high priest. We only have one high priest. That's Jesus himself. What does it mean for me as sort of a rank and file kind of priest? Well, I think we've all been clothed in his righteousness. You know, he has the ultimate yes. beauty and glory and, mm -hmm. and his clothing is glorious. Yes. But we have a lesser Glory, I guess. I don't know if you. Yeah, almost a, a derivative it. glory. Exactly. Yeah. That comes from Him. That He has mm. given to us yeah. from from uh, from the High Priest, and we as priests, we all have that common yes. clothing, as the same way as all these priests had that common mm. clothing as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about the prodigal son when he returns. The father yes. clothes him with the robe, yes. gives him the ring, puts sandals on his feet. You know, when, when you place your trust in Christ, uh, you have those things. There, there's ownership. There's this relationship. There's, uh, there's righteousness applied to you. There's um, belonging. Uh, it's, it's a cool picture to think about being clothed uh, by, by Jesus, you know. That's beautiful. Mm. All right, good. Well, let's take a break here. And uh, we can pick it up later on because a, a lot of these things, the next chapter, chapter 29 of Exodus, is all about how they carried out the consecration ceremony. We dealt with that in, mm -hmm. I think, adequate depth right. on a Sunday morning. And uh, we'll wait until chapter 30, 31, around there, where we talk about more of the uh, furniture for the tabernacle. Mm -hmm.